invite the congregation to please stand for a brief order for confession and forgiveness. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with all. I'll stay with you. Let us pray. Yeah. Almighty and eternal God, you restrain the powers of heaven and earth. Mercifully hear your people's prayers for peace in our time. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading is from 1 Samuel, third chapter. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There were no frequent visions. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lie down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. 
Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? <clears throat> Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of the prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is written, two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits outside the body, but sexual immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought for a price, so glorify God in your body. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. share that with someone else you want to say come and look at this or check this out there's all kinds of things that we might say come and see come and see what what I found come and see what I just made I wonder does anybody like to play with magnetiles yeah magnetiles a lot of magnetiles fans those are good you can so when you make something like you make a big strong tower or a castle or a house or a garage or something you might Say to your brother or your sister or your mom or your dad, come and see what I made. I made this really cool tower, tower or castle. Or what if you learn how to do something in the sport that you play? Or you've been practicing something. Like I know several of us up, up here do karate. So if you've learned your like your hyper form for your belt level, and you want to say, come and see. Sometimes your karate instructor will say, Oh, we've got you know a black belt here that's going to show us how to do the hyper form and they do all this flips and stuff and it's amazing. Obviously, I'm not a karate expert. <laughs> I like to watch, but but anyway, there's all kinds of things that we get excited, we're really excited about, and we just want others to know about it too. And we hear that in our gospel story this morning. Somebody got excited about Jesus. It's a man named Philip. He was someone who Jesus asked to follow him, and Philip wanted to be Jesus' disciples. So Philip followed Jesus. And after Jesus asked Philip, to, he said, follow me, Philip did. Then Philip ran and found his friend named Nathaniel. He 
told Nathaniel all about Jesus, who he had met. And he said, this, this Jesus, this rabbi I just met, he is, he is the Messiah. He is the Savior. He is the real Messiah, the one that we've been waiting for, the one that the scripture, that God's word has been telling us about. It's him. We've been asking him to follow us on him. And so then Nathaniel wasn't, wasn't too sure about what Philip was saying. He, and so he asked him, like, well, really? I, I don't know about that, you know, and kind of, kind of like that. And so then <coughs> Philip said to his friend Nathaniel, he said, come and see. I think that, I think that Philip was really excited about Jesus and that he wanted his friend to be excited about Jesus too. And so later on in our gospel story, Nathaniel gets to meet Jesus too. And Jesus gets to tell Nathaniel about who he is. And then Nathaniel believed, and Nathaniel followed Jesus too. So, you know what? There's all kinds of things we've thought about that we get really excited about. And we want people to come and see, come and see what, what we just made, or come and see the thing we've been doing. What about being like Philip and sharing with our friends about Jesus? What if we said, come and see who Jesus is? Because we love Jesus, we believe in Jesus, and we want others to be to, to get to know Jesus too and be excited about him too. There's all kinds of ways that we can do that. We might not you know, be yelling up at somebody, come and see, come and see. We might not do that. That's kind of silly. But we can... What if we had a sleepover with our friends on a Saturday night? They can come with us to church on Sunday morning. You know, some of our big kids in youth group do that, and that's pretty awesome. Or if we are talking to our friend, and our friends that are kind of having a bad day, we can ask our friend, can I pray for you? And say a prayer for them, and we go and get them there. There's all kinds of ways that we can share Jesus with others. But we do that because... God puts it in our heart to be excited about him and to want to share. So if we remember the phrase, come and see, maybe this week God will put it on our heart to help others to come and see Jesus. And maybe God will also work on our hearts to help us to come and see Jesus every day. That'd be great. So let's bow our heads and uh, hold our hands, and I'll say a prayer for us. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for church. We thank you for Sunday school and the time to be together up here for children's message. We ask that you would help us to come and see you every day. Help us to believe in you. Help us to grow in our faith in you. And help us to share your love with others. Help us to go to our friends and say, come and see. Come and see who Jesus is. He is our Savior. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, you have searched us and you have known us. And we are thankful for your presence in our lives and the ways that you work on our hearts. We pray that you would open up our hearts to hear your word proclaimed this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There's something about the cold weather and the cold weather and just the busyness that the year already is. Kind of, you know, you need that little extra push, that little motivation to get through a busy week. Maybe you start to think about warmer places and vacations you might already have lined up for this year, and trying to get away for a little while. And, and uh, you know, no matter where we go for travels, there's always something funny that ends up happening. So you have that funny memory that you look back on. Well, this week, my husband Derek and I were thinking about. Just a funny little memory from um, a past trip, and all that Derek had to say were just two words, and we both knew exactly what he, what he was recalling, and we both started cracking up. So this is what he said. He said, sea turtles. 
procedural results of for us to just kind of remember a silly a silly thing that happened on a on a trip. So this was from our honeymoon. We had um, gone on a cruise to the Caribbean for our honeymoon, and and there was um, one morning on our cruise that we were sitting at breakfast, and and it was at the, the the day we had arrived at our first port, and so we were all excited about that, and just enjoying a nice meal. And you know, I'm looking out the windows at, at the dining hall, and, and looking out, you know, the, the beautiful water and everything. And lo and behold, I see a sea turtle swimming right by the ships. And let me just say, I'm one of those people that I get very excited, very excited about little things. And when I get very excited about little things, I expect everyone around me to also get equally as excited about those little things. And I can be very persistent with that. And so I was that morning, and I just couldn't help myself. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm so elated that I see a sea turtle swimming by the ship that I'm sure I probably like bumped into, knocked over a chair or two, on my way to the window to get a closer look at the sea turtle. And you know, there's this innocent victim, as I like to refer back to him, just a man sitting at the table next to us trying to you know, enjoy his breakfast. And I'm like, so ecstatic about this sea turtle. I have to go over to this man and say, you gotta look at the sea turtle, there's a sea turtle out there. And you know, here comes crazy turtle lady trying to get him to look at something. And all he's trying to do is eat his breakfast. And I just, to, I mean, you know, several years later, look back to that moment and think just how funny it was that I would just come up to someone random and, and, and try to get them super excited about something that I was excited about. And so that was my come and see come and see kind of memory that I have, that I like to chuckle at. Now, why do I remember that and laugh? Because I was, I was very insistent about how excited I was about this animal, that I wanted everyone to join with me too. But it's funny because there was no like friendship or even no prior conversation that was struck up with this man at the table next to us. He was just nice enough, nice enough or you know, caught off guard enough to, to um, just quickly look over at this, at this animal and experience my joy along with me. But, um, but there was no friendship there to kind of make it make sense that I was talking to him about something random. But in our gospel text this morning, we have, we have the invitation to come and see. Come and see. And that, that phrase comes across in a quick conversation uh, between two friends. And we've got a little back and forth that happens between Philip and Nathaniel who are able to share with each other in, a, in the way that they do because they're good friends. In John's Gospel, we have just one of the many stories in the Gospel accounts of disciples who meet Jesus and are called by Jesus to follow him. And Philip, in this Gospel text, Philip is already sold. He's already following Jesus. And, and Nathaniel has some questions. And Jesus meets Philip and says to him, follow me. And the next thing that John writes is, is that Philip goes over to his friend Nathaniel and he's telling him all about Jesus. And he says, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said, and we might imagine, with along with maybe a little bit of a smirk, Nathaniel says, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And instead of sidestepping or that question or, or arguing with him, maybe you're debating, Philip offers him a simple invitation. He says, come and see. Come and see. And then Jesus speaks to Nathaniel like he's known him forever. Like he knows him better than, than anyone ever could. And then Nathaniel ends up following Jesus too. The things that Jesus knows, only God could know about Nathaniel. And so Nathaniel's life is changed when he proclaims his faith in Jesus and then our text ends with Jesus giving him a promise that amounts to a really big kind of watch this. He says, you will see heaven opened up. Amazing. Amazing. So for Nathaniel to see Jesus for who he really is, it took Jesus' words, I saw you. Jesus said, I saw you. There's a, a TV series um, online and available on all kinds of streaming, streaming services um, called The Chosen. And hopefully you've heard of The Chosen. Um, and if not, I, I, I'd encourage you to check it out. Um, it's the first ever multi-season series, TV series, portraying Jesus and his disciples. 
Now, to me, the, the Chosen series is a fascinating way of imagining what life was like for Jesus and his disciples to do ministry together. In every episode that I've watched, my biggest takeaway that I can just kind of continue to reflect on is, is seeing how much Jesus changes the lives of those he meets. There's a specific episode in the series that imagines our gospel text that we have for today. It's, it comes in the second episode um, in season two, and the name of the episode is, I Saw You. I Saw You. And the majority of that episode is the backstory that we just don't have in our gospel text leading up to these words of Jesus that changes it all for Nathaniel. Now, the producers, as they do, you know, they take some, some creative license and, and they depict Nathaniel as a failed architect, but a faithful Jew. And he's shown as, as just feeling very lost and, and desperate for God to help him. And he's sitting under a fig tree in one scene. And, and amidst his prayers and his worst moment, you see Nathaniel looking up to the heavens and crying out, Do you see me? So when Jesus says later on, when Jesus meets Nathaniel, when Jesus says, I saw you under the fig tree, perhaps as some scholars would agree, Nathaniel was sitting beneath a shady tree and, and doing some deep contemplation. And then when Jesus greets him, it's Jesus' miraculous way of, of confirming that yes, the Lord does know our hearts like no one else could. He does hear our prayers. He does really care for us. For the first time, Jesus demonstrates his divine knowledge. And this Jesus, this rabbi from Nazareth, he might be from a, a nothing town, but this is an extraordinary man. And he is fully man, and he's fully divine. That is how John reveals Jesus as the Messiah in this text. This is our epiphany. Jesus, Son of Man, born in insignificant Nazareth, also bears the title Son of God, and he is our way to heaven. Now, thinking about this, this whole text um, in particular, you know, the story of, of two friends who have different journeys of beginning to follow Jesus, perhaps there are two ways that we ourselves approach the revealing of Jesus as the Messiah, one like Nathaniel and the other like Philip. And like Nathaniel, we meet Jesus with curiosity and with questions. Or we might experience some skepticism. It might just depend, it might be different for each of us. It might just depend on, on our situation that we're in right now or the kind of you know, season of life that we find ourselves in or, or our experience of church. You know, we talk with our, with our good friends and neighbors and you know, people that we just kind of interact with day to day. Everyone has their own, you know, experience of questions when it comes to faith. That's a very natural thing for us to have as human beings. We do have curiosity about higher power, about God. But let's notice in our text that questions are welcomed, even the seemingly obvious ones. So when Nathaniel asks his friend Philip, basically like, um, yeah, right. The Messiah is from Nazareth. Philip answers with a confident yet simple invitation. Come and see. When Jesus calls out to Nathaniel and he says to Jesus, how do you know me? And Jesus not only shows his knowledge of Nathaniel, but in doing so, he reveals himself to Nathaniel. So the questions that come up in this text, they're not ignored. Then they're not seen as stumbling blocks. They're welcomed. I think you know, to connect our life as a church, to connect us to this story, I think we're very blessed here at St. Peter's to, um, to say that questions are welcomed. Questions are welcomed here. I think my favorite example of that right now going on is if you come and join us on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock in the fellowship hall, we always have our, our Wednesday morning Bible study. Um, but right now, we're just getting started with the book of Revelation. And yes, if you ever spend any time in Revelation, it is very natural to have all kinds of 
questions about that book of the Bible, and we do come and bring up those questions um, each week in our Bible study, and that's that's just so um, encouraging to be a part of. To know that you know we all we all have things that you know we, we read the scripture that just kind of don't make sense or strike us in a certain way, and and we want to go deeper into that, or we see you know a scripture being you know from the Old Testament being referenced, so we want to go check that out, and it's just it's great to be able to be spending time in God's Word together, whether it's you know a Bible study that meets or a small group or Sunday school classes or you know children's ministry, youth ministry. Questions are good. Questions are good for us to ask together because they help us to grow deeper in our faith in Christ. Those questions are, are welcome, so they're good. So yes, meeting Jesus with our questions and our curiosity is good. Nathaniel met Jesus, and he asked questions, and he proclaimed faith, and he followed him. That sounds like a wonderful change in life. Now in another way, like Philip, we might meet Jesus and then see the impact of knowing Jesus in our relationships, in our friendships that we have. In John's account, it says that, that after Jesus said to Philip, follow me, that Philip found Nathaniel. And we might imagine like how quickly we would be able to find Nathaniel. Did he, did he go and, and try to remember where he last saw Nathaniel and, and run up to him as, as quickly as he could to go and share with him? It's that joy. It's that joy of, of finding the long-awaited Messiah. He has to share that with his friend. We think about our, our good friendships that we have, um, and we get to have fun with our friends and just, just be ourselves with them and open up to each other, confide in each other, and, and trust each other. There's a lot to be said about the goodness of relationships that we have and the ability that we have to share our faith in those relationships. There's a lot to be said for evangelism and relationships. They go together. They really do. There's so much uh, joy in sharing the gospel with people that we already know, we already trust. They know our life experience and we can relate to each other in that way. There's a lot to be said about sharing the gospel in relationships because we're bringing our true selves into our deepest friendships. And what is that, that true self that we get to share? Who, who are we really in a friendship? Well, in our baptism, we get the new name, child of God. And because of our baptism, who we really are has everything to do with who we are in Christ. So we're bringing our, our identity in Christ into our friendships and into our relationships. And through the gift of faith, through the Holy Spirit guiding us in our relationships, we too, like Philip, can share Jesus with our friends and neighbors and loved ones. We can listen to their real, legitimate questions that they have about faith. And instead of like just sidestepping or ignoring or, or debating with them, we, we invite them. Come and see. Come and see. Now we can say come and see because our faith gives us that solid footing to stand on. Faith tells me, I know what I'm inviting you into. And we know firsthand how life-changing faith in Christ is. Thanks be to God. And that brings us so much true joy in our hearts like Philip. We're going to go find our friends. Go seek them out. Find our friends and share Jesus with them. And that's not just some cheesy thing to say. That's real. That's what knowing Christ does to us. You know, no matter which approach we might connect with, Philip or Daniel, this, this following Jesus, it isn't about us. It's about Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, the King of Israel, who is the true, long-awaited Messiah. Jesus is the one who has opened heaven up for us to believe. And just like on that day when Jesus was baptized and the heavens were opened up, Jesus promises to us that one day, truly, truly, 
I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. That's Jesus' promise for us, his followers. So, come and see, friends, and bring your questions to me. In Jesus' name.
us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for all leaders in the church that they may be familiar with the ways of the Lord and able to teach the young how to listen for and respond to God's call as Eli did with Samuel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we pray that your justice may be announced in the vast assembly of the nations, so that morality and respect for life may reemerge and prevail. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for people as they seek out their vocations, that from the midst of families sensitive to God's will, young people may emerge who know they are looking for Jesus, who stay with him and follow his call. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for purity of life and conduct, especially among the young, that each Christian may guard and respect his and her body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that Jesus may intervene in the lives of the poor, the sick, the grieving, and the oppressed, sending his followers to help them and supporting them in their hearts. We especially pray for Olin. Charlie, Marie, and Summer, along with all those we name in the silence of our hearts or lift aloud on our lips. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our faithful departed who tried to keep their ears open to obedience while they walked on this earth, that God may purify them and reward their devotion with the joys of Paradise. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share the peace of one another. Thank you.
supper he took the cup he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant to my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this in remembrance of me <coughs> lord remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be 
thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet for all is now ready. Body of Christ. 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Bless you now and forever. Amen.